Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My guest that I'm bringing to you guys is Dr. Terry Walls. Most of you guys probably know her from her well-known nutrition program called the Walls Protocol. This is a protocol that she designed for people with MS as well as other autoimmune conditions. She is a patient with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, which had confined her to a tilt recline wheelchair for four years. Then she slowly improved her function, strength, and endurance through exercise and physical therapy, as well as following her nutrition protocol, eventually being able to walk and even ride a bike. She actually pedals her bike to work every day. On today's episode, Dr. Walls talks to us about her journey with MS, as well as her guidelines for managing MS through nutrition and exercise. She even gives us specific guidelines. She also mentions some of her favorite food substitutes, how to follow the Walls protocol if you're vegan or on a low-carb diet, and why ketosis is important. Dr. Walls, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I've got a lot of questions for you, starting with your personal journey. But before we get to that, is it okay if I ask you a question from my interview deck? Of course. All right. Sounds good. So your question is, were you ever really passionate about something and then suddenly lost interest? If so, what was it? So, you know, I love doing Taekwondo and uh, competed nationally um, in full contact free sparring. Uh, and uh, I, I just love that uh, thrill of the competition. Then I entered medical school and learned how uh, bad it was for my brain to uh, be kicked in the head uh, during competition. So I continued to do Taekwondo, but I stopped doing full contact free sparring uh, competitions. Uh, because I said, nope, my brain is too valuable. I can't let people try and kick it anymore. Right. <laughs> I like that. That's very cool. All right. So again, I have so many questions, but can we first start off with a little bit about your story? You have MS and it yeah. led to the development of so many things, but can you tell us a little bit about you? So, um, you know, I grew up on a farm, uh, very vigorous, very uh, physically active. Uh, went off to college, uh, then to medical school, uh, had a practice, things were going great. Uh, and as 20 years ago, you know, I'm out walking with my wife, and a half mile from home, my left leg grows weak, dragging it to hobble home. I see the neurologist the following day, who says, you know, Terry, this could be bad, or really, really bad. So at night in bed next to Jackie, I'm thinking about bad and really, really bad. I've had 20 years of progressively worse electrical pains across my face uh, that were trigeminal neuralgia. And so, you know, I, I'm not wanting to become disabled. I am secretly praying for a fatal diagnosis. Three weeks later, I hear multiple sclerosis. I see the best people. I take the newest drugs. But, you know, I'm, I'm a professor of medicine, so of course I'm, I'm very aggressive. But I continue to decline relentlessly. My physicians tell me about uh, the paleo diet. After being a vegetarian for 20 years, a lot of prayer and meditation, I go adopt the paleo diet. The following year, I'm in a tilt recline wheelchair. Uh, that's um, when it's clear that my trigeminal neuralgia is getting worse. My um, function is uh, declining. I go back to reading the basic science. And I decide that mitochondria are key. I devise a supplement protocol uh, for my mitochondria, and it slows my decline. Um, I am still declining. I, uh, by 2007, I cannot sit up like I am now. I'm in a zero-gravity chair with my knees higher than my nose. Fortunately for me, the university in the uh, Veteran Affairs Hospital I'm at have been redesigning my job so I can continue to work. I discover a study using electrical stimulation of muscles. I asked my physical therapist, Yo, could I try that? He says, uh, it's called E-STEM, it's for athletes. I could grow bigger muscles for you, but I don't know that your brain could talk to them. And so I could be putting ankle weights on you and it would be making it even more difficult to do the little bit of walking that you're doing now. 
but he does let me try. It hurts like hell. I mean, it really hurts, but when it's over, I feel great. He says, you know, Terry, this is probably the endorphins that you've not had in a long time. So we started adding e-stim to my physical therapy. And mind you, I can only do 10 minutes at a time. Um, with Otherwise, I'm too exhausted and I can't function for the rest of the day. Uh, and I discover the Institute for Functional Medicine. They have a course on neuroprotection. I take that. I have a longer list of supplements. Then I have this really big aha. Like, what if I redesigned my paleo diet to stress the, the nutrients that I was taking in supplement form? Because I'd probably get other important things for my brain and body. So that's several more months of research. Uh, in December 26th, 2007, I started eating this new way. And originally, it's with list and list of foods that I'm now stressing. Uh, and in January, my physical therapist says, you know, Terry, you're, you're getting stronger. And he has me, he, he uh, advances my exercises. I'm now doing them twice a day, 10 minutes, and gradually more, uh, adding more e-stem. Uh, at the end of February, I begin walking with a cane. Wow. I, and then um, I'm beginning to walk around uh, the VA hospital. I'm beginning to walk around the block. Um, I asked Jackie, you know, do you think I could um, bike again? Because biking had been a, a big part of our life. And she says, well, you know, I, I think maybe in the fall, things keep going well. And Mother's Day, 2008, we have to have this emergency family meeting because I want to ride my bike. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we have this meeting. Jackie tells my son, my, my big um, six foot five inch son, he's going to jog on the left side. Zebby, my daughter, will jog on the right. She'll follow behind. We all get in position. I'm you know, at the curb and I push off. My bike wobbles a little bit, but I, I, I get my balance and I bike around the block. Wow. My big son is crying. My daughter's crying. My wife is crying. I, I'm crying. And when I talk about that story, I cry now because when you have secondary progressive MS, when you have a progressive neurologic disorder, part of the adaptive principle is you let go of the future. So even though I had remarkably improved, I had let go of the future. I was just taking each day as it unfolded. And my physicians had always said, once I entered the progressive phase, that functions once lost would never come back. Mm -hmm. I'd done all of that work to slow my decline. I had no hope of, of recovery because I knew that was not possible. But I just biked. Uh, and it's like how much recovery might be possible. The understanding of MS was incorrect. Um, I, I kept biking a little more every day. In October, uh, Jackie said, let's sign, sign up for the Curry Drive. It's 18.5 months. And of course, that was way farther than I, I had biked thus far. We yeah. figured, like, you know, however far I'd bike would be a, a triumph. So once again, when I crossed that finish line, my kids are crying. My wife is crying. I'm crying. And that fundamentally changes how I think about disease and health. It will change the way I practice medicine. It will change the focus of my research. And I begin um, teaching the public and ultimately other clinicians how to uh, approach autoimmune in a very different way. Yeah, and that your story is so inspiring. And I think so many of us are glad that you took that step and took it into your own hands to then lead to the development of the Walls Protocol. I know it's helped so many people. Can you share with us what the principles are of your program? You know, I think that the key element is that um, recognize there are all these environmental factors that are under our control, that we can either optimize to create more health, or we can let them dwindle to create more disease state. Uh, and so uh, in, in my book, The Walls Protocol, I review dietary choices, uh, stress reduction uh, choices, 
exercise choices, supplement choices, uh, and some of the other lifestyle factors. Uh, I, I, I used to stress that food was the where everybody should start. My patients have taught me that I need to meet them where they're at. For some people, where they need to start is movement and exercise. For some, where they need to start is a stress reduction practice. I, um, I, I do remind people that you can't exercise your way out of a terrible diet. You can't stress reduce your way out of a terrible diet. So ultimately, if you want health, you'll have to come back to food. However, I recognize that for some of us, we have to address movement or stress first, and then we are in a little better place to deal with some of the challenges that will arise when we attempt to address food choices. Yeah, that's so true. It is all correlated to one another. You know, biology is deeply interconnected. You know, but life began about three and a half billion years ago. And it was through the random mutations that occur that evolved into multicellular organisms, to plants, to fungi, to animals, uh, in all these unicellular organisms. What is amazing, if we look at our biochemical pathways, the, the biochemistry in our cells, about 70% of it is shared across all those life forms. Wow. Uh, isn't that uh, pretty amazing? Yeah. Uh, and so, yes, there are some unique pathways that make, make me human, uniquely human, but it's a tiny amount of my biochemistry. Mm -hmm. Biochemistry is so richly interconnected with checks and balances that allow us to function and evolve. Uh, and so to think that I could pick a drug that will attack a very specific step in my biochemical pathways, that's going to re it's great for, for getting NIH funding. I mean, that's how we, we get our NIH funding, studying one molecular pathway. And we learn a lot, but it's not how you're going to create health. You have to address the whole system right? as well and, as you can. Yeah, and I'm curious too. So you had said before coming up with your nutrition protocol, you had said you were trying the paleo diet. Uh, you had, were, did you say disease-modifying therapy? Or yeah, other? yeah. You know, I, I absolutely took disease modifying therapy. Uh, I, I took um, mitoxantrum, very, very potent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then I took Tizabri. It's one of the most potent disease modifying drugs. I continued to decline. Uh, then I went on Celsept. I continued to decline. I did the paleo diet, the autoimmune intervention protocol, AIP diet. Mm -hmm. Continued to decline. I did supplements. I slowed my decline. Um, I did e stem. Uh, and I was very slowly getting, you know, stronger, very slowly. The magic happened when I really took this very comprehensive approach. I said, okay, so here are the nutrients that are really important for my brain cells, my mitochondria. Where are they in the food? Because I bet if I go to the food, there's probably extra stuff in the food that we haven't named yet, we don't know, that are important for me. So I had this long list of all these foods I needed to be sure that I was eating. So once I focused on what to eat as opposed to what to not eat, you know, I went back to meditation. Um, the magic happened. and It was stunning, really, how rapidly things changed for me. And, you know, how I was able to um, grow uh, what I was doing. And, you know, I'm a former athlete. I, and so I, I was certainly... Um, I, I was working with a physical therapist who treated athletes and he treated me like an athlete. We had a very um, rigorous training schedule that I was adhering to. We had to start very, very slowly. You know, 10 minutes was all I could do. Then I got to 10 minutes twice a day, then 15 minutes twice a day, then 20 minutes twice a day, then half an hour twice a day. And then I had to figure out you know, I'm still working. I got to sort of do some of this stuff while I'm at work. I eventually figured out how to train all of my waking hours. And the training that I did for my recovery for four years was more rigorous than the training I did when I was competing nationally for full contact free sparring. Wow. That, uh, that sounds 
aggressive. If, what are your thoughts on if people feel that they can't exercise that frequently? Oh, of course. No one can. When you first start uh, in my clinical practice, um, I, I get a sense of how disabled they are. And we might be starting with a two-minute workout. Gotcha. Uh, and we um, guide people that this is a hormetic stress. So for your muscles, it's mild to moderate stress from which you can fully recover within a couple hours. Yeah, and so even if you are wheelchair bound, even if you are bed bound, I want that mild hormetic stress. So it might just be doing arm circles like this. It might be doing half jumping jacks. Yeah. Uh, it might be laying on your back and uh, curling your toes towards you and trying to lift your uh, knees up off the floor. So we, we adapt the exercise to what part of your body is still moving and how disabled you are. It might be just a minute or two of exercise. And then I want you to know, can you get back to your usual level of energy and function within a couple hours? And can you function normally? If the answer is no, we did too much. Then we have to do it smaller. Uh, and the goal will be eventually we'll, we'll change the exercise. You're exercising every day, a different part of your body. But in the beginning, it might be two, two days a week, then three days a week. Then eventually we can, we can exercise every day, but I'm going to exercise different parts of, of your body. So today I, I did my strength training routine. Uh, that was what I was doing this morning and some stretching. Uh, tomorrow, um, the weather's nice. I'll go do a bike ride for a couple hours through the woods. Uh, and I'll do some hits on the way back. Now, and then Sunday, I'll, I'll probably swim. So I, I, do, different, I, I do different stressors uh, for my body. But, but the concept is mild to moderate stress. So your cells can fully recover from that stress. And if you can't uh, recover, you did too much. And we have to do a smaller stress. I love hearing you say all of that because so many people with MS who do have limited mobility feel like they can't exercise because they can't exercise in the way that they used to. But there are so many ways that you can get mobility and exercise even from a seated well, position. Yeah, let's let's talk about our hands. Your man, yeah. our hands are incredibly incredible, uh, and so. It might be that your exercise is making a fist, spreading your fingers, make a fist, spreading your fingers, uh, an hand putty that you squeeze, and then you're opening up your hand against resistance. Uh, the the um, uh, belly dancing has these beautiful, beautiful hand orchestrated movements that uh, I've done some belly dancing lessons. And I was like, oh my God, that That's is fun. fabulous exercise. Uh, for your hands. And many of us don't do uh, hand exercises. Playing the piano, wonderful hand exercises. So um, as long as some portion of your body that's moving, and we could also do vocal exercises. We could do deep breathing exercises. We could do uh, singing. Um, there, there are a number of very basic uh, vocal exercises uh, working on uh, singing Do, Re, Mi. Oh, very cool. You know, uh, hum, gargling. So yeah. there are uh, diaphragmatic breathing. Mm -hmm. We should be exercising. Yes. And there's so many ways. I love those examples. And I've seen you share before about the specific, the brand being the newbie, but generally speaking, direct current stimulation. Is that something that you feel most people with MS would benefit from? Well, um, if you have a uh, muscle weakness, using electrical stimulation will provide more current, more stimulation to that muscle group while you contract, so, and that will accelerate the recovery. 
the uh, Russians first used simulation to grow more muscle mass for their uh, Olympic athletes. It's uh, weight trainers use that. Uh, people who are engaged in strength sports will use that. It, it's very effective. Uh, we are now, uh, last 20 years, beginning to see people use this in rehabilitation. Uh, it's very effective to grow muscle mass. You have to, if, if you want to be able to control that muscle, have to volitionally, that is through your effort, through your mind, contract the muscle while an electrically driven current is also contracting the muscle. If you just ride the current, uh, you can grow muscle, your brain may not use it. If I, I'll make the caveat that we know that uh, people who have a spinal cord injury, who have had a, a complete severing of the spinal cord, so they're not going to walk again or use their hands again. If they use electrical stimulation of muscles, drive contraction uh, in their arms, or legs, they can maintain bone health, reduce their inflammation, uh, improve their uh, lipids, improve their uh, blood pressure, improve their blood glucose. So they're doing a lot of great metabolic stuff, even though they fail to walk their arms. So I want you to do volitional exercise. I want you to work with a physical therapist uh, who's familiar with uh, the um, use of E-STEM for athletes, because uh, you'll, you'll get more out of it. But even you are, have severe limitations. Uh, you get so much out of it uh, metabolically. If you have no muscular limitations, you don't need E-STEM, you just need to exercise. Now, if you wanna be older and folks with MS who wanna be bodybuilders, then yes, <laughs> then it's for your athletic hopes and dreams. It's not part of your rehab. Gotcha. That's a good differentiation. So taking it back to a little more of the nutrition side of things that you should be doing along with exercise, do you have any best substitutes? So there's a lot of things that we should oh, stay yeah. away from in terms of, you know, whether it's sugar substitutes or dairy substitutes, what are some of your favorites? Well, um, the first thing I, I want to tell people is before you get into what to remove, focus on what you need to add. So get in the non uh, get greens in, uh, the cabbage family, onion family, mushroom family, deeply colored things, beets, carrots, berries. Um, uh, so get all those additions in. That will help you crowd out the bad stuff. Uh, things to remove. Uh, there's a benefit from removing gluten uh, in dairy uh, because it's, this isn't true for everyone, but for many with autoimmune conditions, the, the immune response to gluten and dairy trigger a leaky gut, trigger the inflammation, and uh, that uh, begins the cascade. So uh, you, you can get gluten-free products, and there are, there are many, many, many more. I have a couple of caveats. 20% of the gluten-free products in the grocery store still have gluten in them. Oh, wow. And 40% of the gluten-free products in the restaurants still have gluten in them. Oh. So I don't eat gluten-free products and I don't get gluten-free things in the restaurant store or from the grocery. Um, I, I'm so sensitive that it triggers my severe uh, pain. So I eat things that are just naturally gluten-free, vegetables, meat, fish, berries, uh, and if I'm wanting to have a starchy kind of stuff, um, and, you know, I'll have uh, yams and squashes. Uh, and that's, but early in the journey, it may be easier to find uh, some gluten-free products. It may be easier to bring your family along if you're doing that. Now, in my journey now, if I want to have a rice kind of product, I'll um, cauliflower rice. Um, if I want to have a sort of starchy uh, something, I will grate uh, yams uh, or squash. Uh, um, I may uh, have grated cabbage uh, instead of rice. Um, I will use um, 
uh, L wraps or collin wraps uh, instead of uh, otritia. But early in the journey, it, it may be very helpful to get those gluten-free products to make it easier for your family to come along. I predict as you get further in the journey and you decide you want to go lower carb and, and you're ready to reduce your processed foods, you will likely experience a uh, leap forward progress in your health as you get away from those processed foods. Gotcha. So what about people who are really trying to follow the walls protocol, but maybe they're mm -hmm. also trying to stay low carb or maybe they don't yeah. eat meat. What are your thoughts for so, those people? Well, the people who don't eat meat for their spiritual belief and don't want to um, uh, devalue someone's point of view, uh, uh, their spiritual beliefs, I will talk about how to do it, how to do it in a healthy fashion to be sure they know how to get complete protein. We may give them an amino acid supplement. Um, I may talk about carnitine, creatine to be sure that um, they have uh, sufficient protein. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk about omega-3s, uh, homocysteine, uh, and you know, the vegetarian vegans will probably need to take supplements to stay healthy. Um, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of lower carb diets. I'm a big fan of ketogenic eating for those uh, people who want, want to do that. If you're doing ketogenic eating, uh, again, you might need to supplement. Uh, you may need to supplement some fiber uh, for your microbiome. So you can have those short chain fatty acids. Um, uh, some people want to supplement with ketone salts, uh, and that can boost your ketones, uh, yes. Uh, there are people who should not do a ketogenic diet if you're trying to get pregnant. Uh, in animal models, ketogenic diet uh, can create problem. If you're very skinny, we don't want you to become underweight. So the BMI of 18.5 uh, is the cut point between healthy weight and underweight status, uh, those people should not be doing a ketogenic diet. Um, but you know, if you're more cognitive decline, if you have insulin resistance, uh, ketogenic is very helpful. Uh, there are, uh, are some new studies out with ketogenic diets that are, are very helpful for diabetes, insulin resistance, fatty liver disease, uh, and for people with MS and for a number of autoimmune conditions. And in fact, uh, we're, we, we've studied ketogenic diet. We have a, a new study going on right now that includes uh, a ketogenic diet in one of the arms. So I, I think it can be a, a very helpful strategy. Yeah, that's so exciting to hear too. Can you explain for our listeners who might not know why being in a ketosis metabolic state is important? Like how, how does it actually work? Why is that beneficial? Sure. Well, um, you have a big fan of evolutionary biology that we should look back at how our species lived and evolved uh, for clues uh, as to what our DNA expects. Uh, and, you know, six million years ago, we were with the primates for eating mostly green leaves, uh, a, a little bit of animal protein. We, uh, from the primates, uh, 2.5 million years ago, um, our genus Homo. Uh, has, has, is there. We have a much larger brain. We're eating more meat. We're still eating a lot of greens. We're eating uh, some tubers. Uh, some people think we're beginning to eat some magic mushrooms, by the way, uh, which is sort of interesting. <laughs> uh, and then 200,000 years ago, um, our species uh, appears. We are getting more meat. And this is really very interesting um, uh, because we have tremendous endurance. Uh, and we track uh, game for a day, day and a half, and they finally keel over from heat exhaustion. It's not that we're great hunters, we just had tremendous endurance. And so during that endurance, if you are exercising moderately vigorously for two and a half hours, you've used up all of your stored carbs. You're in ketosis on the basis of exercise. Um, our, our big guys, brought the game home. Uh, the ladies, we were out minding the kids, doing our, 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 our short range hunter gathering. So we're, we were probably in ketosis because we were also physically active, although the distance was short. Mm -hmm. um, the guys bring home uh, the bacon, so to speak. 
uh, the social compact is the women cook, the men eat first, and then we get to eat. So we have a couple of days of, of plentiful food. So we we had a hormetic stress of exercise and ketosis, um, and we were had a ketogenic uh, metabolism physiology. Now we have a higher protein diet, lots of fiber, uh, and whatever herbs and greens that we could eat for a couple of days. Then the food is gone, and the cycle repeats. So for 200,000 years, that's how we survived. We would be in ketosis, mostly on the basis of exercise or absence of food. Mm -hmm. And then we'd get food, and we have a couple of days of plenty or a week. And then we are back out working our asses off to get food again. Right. Then we became farmers. And we still had uh, some winter, we still had periods where it'd be in ketosis and we would have uh, more plentiful food. This uh, paradigm of continual feeding, grazing throughout all of our waking hours is very artificial. It is much more physiologic to, to switch between ketosis on the, and that was on the basis of exercise and then out of ketosis burning either sugar or fat because we had uh, sufficient food. A high fat diet is something that we created about um, 100 years ago uh, to, to treat epilepsy. Uh, so we don't have nearly as much evolutionary experience with that. I, I think we have, a, I'm very comfortable with uh, uh, periodic fasts, uh, intermittent fasting, uh, lower carb diets, um, the really high fat diet, we don't know as much about uh, the long-term safety of that, mm -hmm. um, but certainly a, a dietary pattern that fluctuates between a ketogenic eating uh, and a refed state, uh, our evolutionary history would say uh, is very healthy, very robust. Uh, it's what I do. Uh, it's, I think it's very uh, health promoting. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's insightful. How can someone participate in any of your clinical trials that you have going on? And also, which ones are you still recruiting for? Well, there's one trial that we're actively recruiting for, um, efficacy of diet and quality of MS. You need to have relapsing, remitting, multiple sclerosis, live within 500 miles of Iowa City. We have three diets, Dietary Guidelines for America, Ketogenic Diet, uh, Modified Paleo Diet. We expect all three diets to be uh, effective. We'll be following blood markers. We'll be following MRIs. Uh, this will be the largest and the longest dietary study. We'll be able to abstract clinical records from UHC for our control as well. Uh, it is very exciting. It, and we're able to do this study thanks to philanthropic support from a donor whose life was transformed um, by uh, thanks to the protocol. Wow, that's amazing. So what would you suggest to people listening right now? What top three things do you feel they should do now to start making a positive difference in their life with MS? Well, the first one is um, think deeply about who or what you care so deeply about that you would run into the house to save. It might be your spouse, your kids. It might be your, your painting, your manuscripts that you're working on. Uh, and so we know what is your personal life's mission. Uh, and then if you're able to link your next action to, I want to be there more effectively for my child, my spouse, my personal life's mission, then it becomes easier to do the work for your next step. Uh, and you can think about if you health would moderately improve uh, in a year, how would you celebrate? Would I be... Uh, going for a dance with my with my spouse? Would I be uh, going to the park with my kids? Would I be uh, uh, walking, uh, doing a fun run, uh, uh, doing the great bike ride across Iowa? What, what would it be? So you, you have sort of a big goal. Uh, and then the third thing is, what's the smallest next little step you could take that gets you a little closer to that goal? So if I want to do a uh, fun run with my kids, maybe the smallest next step is to ask for a physical therapy appointment. Or my smallest next step is that I'm going to commit to uh, walking around the block uh, once a week. 
I love that those three things aren't necessarily tangible things. Like it's not like drink more water, eat more vegetables, but rather the the necessary work that needs to come before that, because what you just outlined will help someone actually stay on track and stay consistent long enough to reap the benefits of those tangible things. We make progress because it matters deeply to us. Mm-hmm. And so helping people get in touch to what is it that matters deeply to you? So you're willing to do the work to achieve these goals that that do matter to you. Yes, awesome. One last question. You actually posted recently about a free five-day challenge that you're hosting. Can you explain what that is and how and when we can participate? Yeah, you know, I do this three times a year. Uh, uh, those signups will show up on my website. It'll show up on Instagram. Uh, it, so we'll do it in August, beginning of the year, uh, and in late spring. Uh, it's five days. You get uh, lessons, inspirations. Uh, we talk about uh, my healing journey and how to grow your internal motivation. Uh, we have a community that forms. We literally put tens of thousands of people through this um, uh, three times a year. Uh, uh, it is just such an amazing resource. It's fun. It's free. And I certainly hope uh, your audience will take advantage of that. Awesome. Yeah. So basically just follow you, get on the newsletter and they'll find out about it. Yes, absolutely. Get on the newsletter, get on my website and you'll get alerts for it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your insights with us and your expertise. You're everywhere. There's so many places that we can find you. You have your book, your website, your newsletters. Can you share just a few of your favorite ways for people to reach out to you? So follow me on Instagram. Uh, That's Dr. Dr. Terry Walls, T-E-R-R-Y. Walls, W-A-H-L-S. Uh, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, Terry Walls. Uh, go to my website, terrywalls.com forward slash diet and download the uh, summary of, of the Walls diet. And be sure and sign up for my newsletter while you're there because then you get to hear uh, research updates as well. Awesome, amazing. And all of those links will be in the show notes as well. So you guys can check there. Thank you again for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much.